cold here. So I've got a question. Is the kingdom of God being preached and taught in Europe? I think the answer is no. The answer is no. I am a Presbyterian. I'm an ordained Presbyterian. Here in Munich, we attend a vineyard church. And vineyard as a movement, maybe you've never heard of it, maybe you have, is one of the Christian groups which is rather interested in talking about the kingdom. It's part of their founding as a group, as a church denomination movement. And yet, I think if you went around, at least in the German-speaking parts of Europe, and talked with vineyard people, you wouldn't find that they had the ability to explain what the kingdom of God is. And I don't even mean like getting the right version. I think they would be rather stumped by that. And that's true also of all the other groups, the Lutherans, the Roman Catholics, the Evangelical Free, whoever else you want to name. The kingdom of God is not something that regular people are ready to discuss. And that's a function of the fact that from the people who are preaching and teaching, it just isn't being preached and taught. I mean, if we don't understand the kingdom, how are we going to understand Jesus? That's pretty much what he talked about. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sanctus Forum. I am Michael Stewart Robb, better known as Mike, and this is another episode, the last episode of this year, last episode of this chapter of Conspiracy Commentaries, featuring Dallas Willard's The Divine Conspiracy. Chapter two is almost done. And we are in a little section here called The Kingdom Must Make Sense. But before we get to that, thanks. We're at the end. So looking forward to the next chapter um, and looking back to the first two that we've already done. I just want to say, you know, pray for this series. Pray that it actually gets out there to the people that need something like this. Uh, I don't know that that is really within my abilities as somebody who can, however, turn on a camera and talk about this stuff. So um, just an encouragement to, to pray for it. Well, um, Dallas here in this section, The Kingdom Must Make Sense, is trying to stitch his book together, I think. I mean, basically his book is about what Jesus preached, taught, believed, even has it in the first sentence here. But this cannot come about unless what Jesus himself believed, practiced, and taught makes sense to us. And that's what the book is about. And he's getting, he's getting to that. But this, he says, but this cannot come about. Now, what he means by this is what he's been talking about in the previous uh, paragraph. And that's three things. Um... A straightforward presentation in word and life of the reality of life now under God's rule. Basically the gospel. Second, in this way we can naturally become his students or apprentices. So, discipleship. Third thing, we can enter his eternal kind of life now. So, a fulfilled life. This life of abundance and obedience that we've been talking about. And he says, this, those three things, cannot come about unless what Jesus believed, practiced, and taught makes sense to us. And at the center of that is the kingdom of God. And he's got three people, two of which are Europeans, um, who basically say, we don't talk about this. We don't talk about the kingdom. Michael Green um, says, we don't talk about it. I, Howard Marshall, who, who I've actually met, um, he taught at the University of Aberdeen when I was there, 
and I, I showed up as at office hours and, and met him and Peter Wagner, all are kind of New Testament people and all say, hey, we're not talking about this. But Dallas Willard wants to talk about it. He wants to talk about what Jesus taught. And why can't we talk about it? Why don't we do it in our churches? Well, Dallas Willard's word for it is difficulties. Last last paragraph. Does what we have discussed in this chapter not make it clear that serious difficulties currently bar people of good intent from an effectual understanding of Jesus's gospel for life and discipleship in his kingdom? And he says he's going to try to help identify and remove these difficulties. Now, end of this chapter, I want you to turn over to chapter 3, what Jesus knew, our God-based world, and I want you to write difficulties at the top of that. These here in chapter 3 are the difficulties that he's going to talk about, and he's got a number of them. Actually, uh, Dallas had trouble writing this third chapter because there were so many things that he wanted to put into it that he had difficulty with it not just taking over the entire book. But those are the difficulties that he's going to deal with, and those are going to allow him to get into these three things that he really wants to talk about. The gospel, discipleship, and what he calls at the end, personal fulfillment. Um, yeah, the fulfilled life. We've already mentioned those three. So that's, that's basically the book trying to be stitched together. That's what he's doing here in this last section. At least that's what I see him doing. Well, just to recap, do we actually have the kingdom of God being preached and taught in Europe or really anywhere in the world? No, I don't think so. Well, then how are we actually going to understand Jesus? That's pretty much what he talked about. And Dallas Willard is going to help us do that, or so he says. And he first is going to, in chapter 3, help us with some difficulties, which are modern or postmodern difficulties, things that have to do with uh, a philosophical understanding of the world. And that's chapter 3. Well, thank you all for being here, and I hope that I have shed some light on chapter 2 this year. And thank you to those of you who help this thing happen through praying regularly and giving regularly. You know who you are. Um, thank you. And for those of you who want to keep up with us and know what's going to happen, know when the next videos are going to kick off next year, sign up for that almost monthly newsletter over at sanctus.institute. It's the best way to keep in touch with us. And I'm going to be taking some time, doing some traveling, doing some writing, doing some thinking, and I will then see you in the next chapter. It actually sounds better this time. Last year I tried to say that and it sounded like a cheesy catchphrase, but I will see you in the next chapter. Maybe. Maybe. Bye.